Let's talk now about minimum illumination, something very important for a CCTV project, especially if you're using your camera in a dark place, in areas where you don't have too much light, you must understand about minimum illumination. So let's see here the concept of uh, how the light is measured first so you can better understand minimum illumination. Okay, so we have here the lux, that's the um, unit of measurement of light. So you have one candle, one meter away from the lens, just like this. Uh, we have here the camera, one meter away, a candle, and the uh, amount of light that's coming here, hitting the lens, hitting the sensor in the camera, it's one lux. Okay, you don't need to memorize this. You don't need to really understand the details here, right? It's just a reference for you. But what is important here is this example. When you have sunny day in the summer, uh, you have 100,000 lux of light. And a sunny day in the winter, you have 10,000 lux of light. And then you start like having less and less light during the night, right? Like a, a full moon, for example, you have 0 0.1. And here you kind of start having some problems, okay? Depending on the camera you're using there, the values uh, below one lux, it's a problem for some cameras. You have a situation just like this one in the picture, for example, you don't have too much light here and uh, you can't use infrared illumination, all right? You cannot illuminate the, the city here with infrared light, right? Infrared, usually you are using in a short range in a place that uh, you control indoors, for example, or outdoors, but in a short range, you don't illuminate a whole city here. So you need in this situation a camera that can work with better illumination. Let's say, for example, 0.1 lux if you have full moon. But if you start like changing, having less and less light here, you're going to have a problem. So you need to choose a better camera. OK. So let's understand the factors that affect the minimum illumination. So you look for the information in the camera catalog, you're going to see something like signal level IRE, for example. And this means, uh, for example, when you're measuring the light that comes in the camera, the minimum illumination, you need to consider the IRE the camera is using, right? I'm not going into technical details here, right? But this is uh, um, the level of light that's coming to the camera is going to give you a signal, right? If you measure the signal, you're going to have the IRE, okay? You can have an oscilloscope to look at the IRE the camera is giving you. And uh, if you have a higher value, value of IRE is better, right? 50, it's a good one. So most of the camera will show you the value in the catalog. If they're using 30 IRE, for example, as the reference for their minimum illumination measurement is not that good as if they're using 50 IRE, right? So be careful with that when you look at the camera catalog. Shutter speed, something very, very important. If you're using one over 60 or one over 30, right? One over 60 would be much, much better when you're talking about minimum illumination, because as you know, if you watch another video about shutter speed, you know that one over 60 is better to freeze images than when they're using one over 30, right? F number is, a uh, let's say 1.2. 1.0 is 0 0.95. For example, if you look at the camera catalog, the camera is showing that with 1.2, you have certain amount of minimum illumination need for the camera, necessary for the camera. It's better than 1.0 because 1.0, you have a uh, uh, bigger aperture in your lens. Okay. And also the gain, the gain control, you can boost your signal in your camera. If the gain is on or off, you have a difference on the measurement, right? I'm talking about all those factors here because when you're looking for minimum illumination in a catalog, you need to look 
on this information. You do need to look at the 50 IRE, 1 over 60 on the shutter speed, the F number 1.2 and gain on, for example, when you're comparing camera. Let's say, for example, you have another camera with different situation. You have, let's say, 30 IRE here. The shutter speed, they're saying that I have 1 over 30 and the F number, it's 1.0, right? 1.0. Look here, I have the camera uh, working with uh, something that's better for them to show a better minimum illumination, okay? I want you guys to understand that's the trick, right? 30 IRE, when you use this value here to measure your minimum illumination, you're gonna get a better result, right? In the numbers, just in the numbers in the catalog, right? Not in the real situation, it's not a better camera. You must understand that because people are misleading everybody with this information, okay? One over 30 is the same and 1.0 is the same. Well, here is for the shutter speed and here for the F number, okay? And the gain, for example, if it's on or off, there is also a difference. So let's understand here an example so we be much clearer. Let's say you have the camera number one with this information here in the catalog. And then they say, oh, all right, you need a minimum illumination of 0 0.05 lux to see image in color. Okay. So that means if the 0 0.05 lux hits the camera sensor, you have image in color and good good quality image okay okay so they're saying this they have this minimum illumination necessary to hit the camera sensor based on this information here the red one right okay and then the other manufacturers say hey my camera has minimum illumination of 0 0.01 lux also in color and then you can think, hey, this camera is much, much better. I, I need less light, meaning at least only, I, I need only 0 0.01 lux to hit the sensor to have image in color, right? But be careful with that because it's a misleading information, right? If you like have 0 0.01 lux hitting your camera, but you, have a signal of 30 IRE. Your signal is not that good as the signal you get on this camera. That's why it's misleading, for misleading information, right? This camera is not better than this one, okay? Also the shutter speed, if you are using in the camera configuration one over 30, your image is gonna blurry if you have fast movement, all right? Here, here is different. With one over sixty, you can you can have something moving in front of the camera a little faster. It's not gonna blurry, and here it's gonna blurry, right? And the, uh, the same with the f number. Here you need the lens that can open, that can have an aperture to get in more light into the camera. With one point two, meaning is not that the aperture is not that big compared to this one. Here you need to buy a lens that works with 1.0. It's an expensive lens, right? You have to expend more money to buy the, this lens. So it's also misleading information, right? So what you must do, you have to do is look for cal uh, calculators that can bring this thing to the same value, meaning you need to compare oranges to oranges or apples to apples, right? If you increase here to five to 50 IRE with one over 60, 1 1.2, to make everything here the same way you have here, then you have the real value here. And usually we be higher than 0 0.05, right? We be sometimes one lux, right? And then you need more light here in this camera to do the same job as this camera. So the camera, this camera will be in the end of the day, much, much better. So be careful with that is a misleading information is all over the place in the market. Okay. So you can't use the camera like this. You need to compare oranges to oranges, right? So here's a quick example. Here I have a camera and uh, here a situation in a dark place. I have a camera. I'm not comparing resolution here, right? One thing at a time. 
here the resolution is not good but i'm not talking about resolution here i'm talking about a, a dark place with minimum illumination all right so here what i have is a camera if i go to the camera and i set the camera to use the shutter speed like one over five for example i can have ghost images the image looks good here because there is no movement at all if i have some movement here i'm gonna have some problems let's see that the way it works all right so here i will walk here look if i freeze my image here look it's a ghost image it's not a good image if it was a car for example you're trying to capture the license plate will be a bad image we will not be able to recognize the license plate all right the same with the persons look here it's missing my legs right so i need to increase the shutter speed here if i increase from one um, over five to one over 30 one over 60 the image will be darker right much much darker than this so it's a trick it's a trick the manufacturer reduce the shutter speed and then you have more light light coming into the camera for more time right and then you have better image in the dark of course but you have ghost images like this and the same happens with the lens aperture right that's so that's the tricky that's the tricky part be careful with that and we also have cameras that say hey it's a dark find camera works uh, with uh, minimum illumination you have starlight cameras and all those technology right they work they amplify the signal that comes to the camera but be careful because a uh, cheap camera doesn't have the technology enough does, doesn't have the sensor big enough to give you a good image right so that's the idea you look in here the image is a little bit ghosty if i start increasing my shutter speed I, we have a better image but darker image in this situation i could use uh, infrared illuminator because the range is not that far but it's not the case here because it's a parking lot i'm not going to install here uh infrared lights i already have light here but they're not enough for this camera even though it is a good camera right so be careful with that so here's the information uh, of a catalog you have here let's say uh, information for color and black and white. you have a minimum illumination here 0 0.03 looks in color and less in black and white. okay and also here the information one over 30 of a second and here is the lens aperture meaning the f number and also the IRE, right? So if we're comparing two different cameras, you need to compare those values the same way, right? Don't don't compare another camera with 30 IRE here, for example, with this camera. The result will be different and you never know which camera is better. So you need to compare, right? So you can have uh, the right comparison there and you can buy the better camera for your project. <laughs>